hello and welcome back okay so we have been discussing about this uh, phenomenon called uh, recrystallization and in the past couple of classes we have uh, discussed about the mechanism of recrystallization as to how the strain free nucleus forms so this is basically a nucleation and growth type of mechanism through which you know the strain free grains form from a highly uh, deformed material so we have talked about the different uh, mechanisms of nucleation and these are as follows it can be through uh, polygonization that is uh, rearrangement of the discrepancies in an array which will uh, leave behind the regions around them dislocation free or strain free it can also happen by the bulging of the grain boundaries from the low strain region to the high strain region and the bulge which forms can serve as the nucleus of the strain free grains and then we also talked about another mechanism which occurs through the subgrain rotation when the boundary between the subgrains can be eliminated when two adjacent subgrains are aligned by the rotation okay so these are different uh, ways by which different mechanisms by which the nucleus of the strain free grains can form and then we also talked about the growth which uh, occurs after the nucleus reaches a particular uh, critical size so the growth process in this case occurs by grain boundary migration and that is how the uh, strained uh, grains of the material are consumed and strain free grains are formed okay and for the growth also we have talked about uh, different models uh, which uh, consider different mechanisms of how these grains grow during the process and finally we talked about uh, this phenomenon that can also occur during recrystallization if you continue to uh, heat the material or hold it uh, for a long period of times then uh, some of the grains will be favorably oriented for further growth and those grains will grow at the expense of the others to a very large extent and this kind of growth is known as abnormal grain growth which also goes by the name secondary recrystallization okay so this was all about the recrystallization process which happens as you heat a cold worked material okay so this kind of recrystallization in which the material is first cold worked and then heated at a particular temperature isothermally is known as static recrystallization but recrystallization can also occur during the deformation process itself simultaneously okay so when recrystallization occurs during the deformation process it is known as dynamic recrystallization because at, as i said it is occurring as the deformation is being carried out simultaneously right so that is why this particular form of recrystallization is known as dynamic recrystallization and this is what we are going to discuss in this particular class in short this is written as drx okay so as i said recrystallization which occurs during deformation is known as dynamic recrystallization and this particularly occurs uh, during hot deformation when the heat and stress are applied simultaneously so a process in which heat and stress are applied simultaneously is known as a 
thermomechanical process hot rolling for example is a thermomechanical process so any uh, deformation process which occurs at high temperature can be considered as a thermomechanical process okay and occurrence of uh, dynamic recrystallization is prevalent in such processes okay and when you talk about dynamic recrystallization there are different forms of uh, drx these are as follows discontinuous dynamic recrystallization or ddrx continuous dynamic recrystallization or cdrx and there is one more form called geometric dynamic recrystallization or gdrx right so these are the different types of dynamic recrystallization process and which will occur that will i mean which form of uh, dynamic recrystallization will occur that will depend on the material and also the deformation conditions okay so a material property which plays a significant role in deciding you know what kind of uh, dynamic recrystallization form will be dominant during the deformation process particularly with regard to discontinuous and uh, continuous dynamic recrystallization process is the stacking fault energy this is a very important uh, material property with regard to dynamic recrystallization okay so we will talk about this in more detail as to how the stacking fault energy affects the whole process so each of this process will have their own mechanisms as to how the nucleus will form as we have discussed before also for the static recrystallization process here also there is a particular mechanism through which the nucleus of the strain free grains will form okay so let us talk about each of these uh, types of dynamic recrystallization one by one and see for each of this how the nucleus forms so let's talk about the discontinuous dynamic recrystallization first the nucleus in this form of drx forms by the same mechanism as in static uh, recrystallization so this forms by uh, the nucleus and, and growth or rather we can say that ddrx occurs by the nucleus and growth process as in the static recrystallization okay so first the nucleus of the strain free grains forms and then it grows by grain boundary migration okay but we still have to talk about as to how this uh, nucleus forms in this case because now we are talking about deformation which is happening at higher temperatures contrary to the static recrystallization in which a deformation has been given at uh, lower temperatures or room temperature and then it is being heated right but here this is a dynamic condition where the deformation and heating are taking place uh, simultaneously okay so let us talk about the nucleation process as it happens in the ddrx or discontinuous uh, dynamic recrystallization So we have seen 
for the strain free nucleus to form there should be a difference in the strain energy between the two regions of the crystal okay and that serves as the driving force for the nucleus okay so this is something that we have discussed before also while talking about the static decrystallization and since the ddr process occurs by the similar type of nucleus and growth process here also you need to have this uh, strain gradients or strain energy gradient in the grains this essentially means that between two adjacent parts of the crystal the dislocation density is different so therefore for ddrx uh, to occur the condition should be such that dislocations can accumulate so this is a primary condition for uh, ddrx to occur because as i said you need to have this uh, gradient in the strain energy for the nucleus to form so you need to have different uh, dislocation density across adjacent regions and therefore you need the dislocations to build up okay so that somewhere the dislocation density will be low and somewhere it will be high right so therefore the occurrence of ddrx is more prevalent in materials having low stacking fault energy in which the cross slip of dislocations is difficult if the stacking fault energy is high the dislocations can easily cross slip and move and therefore dislocation build up or dislocation accumulation will be difficult right so uh, for ddrx to occur as a dominant uh, mechanism the stacking fault energy should be low okay now if you talk about the nucleus and process as such uh, it uh, starts on the uh, existing grain boundaries at a critical strain when the dislocations can build up right so that is why you need to have a critical strain because beyond which only the dislocations which are generated due to the deformation process can start accumulating and will create the conditions for ddrx okay and the existing grain boundaries can serve as the sites for the nucleus to form and the commonly accepted mechanism for this is the grain boundary bulging mechanism that we have talked about before for the nucleus to form right so during the deformation serrations can form in the grain boundaries and these serrations can develop into the bulge and lead to the nucleation of 
the strain free grains okay and the other thing that you need to look at here when you are talking about uh, high temperature deformation and the occurrence of dynamic recrystallization is the flow behavior of the material or the deformation behavior of the material at high temperature the flow behavior of any material at high temperature depends on the deformation temperature and the strain rate and this will be given by a parameter known as zener holomon parameter which is written as z and is given by the following expression where epsilon dot is the strain rate q is the activation energy for the deformation r is the gas constant and t is absolute temperature right so when the bulging occurs uh, subgrains will form and the subgrains will be surrounded by what kind of boundaries that would depend on the zener holomon parameter okay for example if you have a high z high value of z means uh, it is at high strain rate and lower temperature condition then the subgrains will be associated with uh, subgrain boundaries on the other hand at lower z that is uh, lower strain rate and higher temperature the subgrains will be associated with uh, twin boundaries so i repeat again depending on the value of the zener holomon parameter the boundary which forms around the subgrains or the nucleus which is actually forming out of this grain boundary bulging uh, 
the character of those boundaries will depend on the value of z okay so high z value means uh, you can see from here you have high strain rate and uh, lower temperature okay so that will give rise to a high z right so under those conditions of uh, high strain rate and lower temperature the boundaries uh, which are associated with the subgrain which is forming out of the bulging will be low angle boundary kind of configuration we can also call them subgrain boundaries so subgrain boundaries are basically low angle grain boundaries if this condition is uh, not satisfied i mean the condition of high z then uh, this low angle boundaries will not form rather you can have uh, formation of twins so therefore at lower z that means lower strain rate and higher temperature the subgrains will be bounded by these twin boundaries okay rather than the low angle boundaries so that is why you know you have to consider this uh, parameter while talking about dynamic recrystallization the zener holman parameter so now we need to understand as to how exactly this bulging happens and you know how exactly the nucleus forms out of that so we know the conditions for that i mean what kind of subgrain and subgrain boundaries will form the conditions for that we have already defined with the help of this zener holman parameter so now let us go ahead and see what exactly happens during this uh, process so what i mean by this you know bulging and the occurrence of uh, serration you can understand by you know uh, by looking at uh, this simple diagram over here since uh, deformation is occurring at high temperature the boundaries you know can develop this kind of uh, serrations and then under the strain it can also migrate and when you have conditions for the gradient in the dislocation density across uh, these boundaries across these existing grain boundaries then uh, you know this kind of bulging can also occur and now what boundary will develop across these bulges that would depend on this right the value of z so as it uh, continues as the deformation continues uh, this uh, bulging will increase and you know it will take up the shape of a subgrain and you might have development of more boundaries across them right now if you actually take a little deeper look as to you know how it actually happens first the condition which is uh, needed for the occurrence of ddrx as i said before is the dislocation density gradient which uh, develop near the original grain boundaries and this is the driving force uh, for the bulging to occur and this is also associated with the formation of a dislocation substructure 
that is arrangement of the dislocations into low energy configurations and that can be represented by this diagram in this manner. So this is the grain boundary. This is also undergoing some shearing due to the deformation. And these are the sub boundaries. Forming due to dislocation rearrangement and this would eventually lead to formation of those uh, serrations in the grain boundary. All right, let us take a quick summary before we wind up this lecture. So in this lecture today, we have discussed about the dynamic recrystallization phenomenon and we have seen that there are three forms of dynamic recrystallization discontinuous dynamic recrystallization or ddrx continuous dynamic recrystallization or cdrx and geometric dynamic recrystallization or gdrx so in this lecture we talked about the first one that is ddrx and we have seen that this is a phenomenon which is very similar to the classical or static recrystallization in terms of the nucleation and the growth mechanism. So the DDRX process also occurs through nucleation and growth and we discussed about the mechanism of nucleation and here we have seen that grain boundary bulging is one of the most uh, dominant mechanisms in case of DDRX and one of the requirements for that to happen is the build up of dislocation so that the dislocation density is different across different grains and due to that a strain energy gradient is built up leading to the grain boundary bulging and the bulge which forms due to this can become a subgrain leading to the formation of the nucleus for the strain free grains okay and the boundary that forms around such subgrains the character of that boundary will depend on the value of z the zener holoman parameter okay so we have seen that at high values of z that is in conditions of high strain rate and lower temperature subgrain boundaries form around these subgrains which form out of the bulge okay and when the value of z is on the lower side then the character of these boundaries forming around the subgrains will be like twin boundaries okay so when the value of z is high subgrain boundaries will form and when it is low then twin boundaries will form around these subgrains which form out of the bulge and with that we come to the end of this lecture thank you for watching